say it is you've got two choices. You can either keep pretending like nothing bad's ever gonna happen to you, and then when it does, you're saying, uh-oh, or you can get ahead of what's coming so that when it does, not if, you're ready for it, and you're sitting pretty, sipping on Mai Tais next to the pool, working on that Caribbean suntan, because you got it covered. So folks, it's time for you to learn the truth about money. It's time for you to take back control of your money so that you are ready for what's about to happen. By doing that, you're setting yourself up for absolute success. No matter what comes your way, you're ready for it. And that's what I want for you, and I wanna help you with that. So go to chrisnoggle.com and sign up for the Wealth Webinar. We do them every Wednesday at 1 p.m., and you need to be there because it's time. For over 90 years, we've been crash testing our cars in the tireless pursuit of automotive safety. At Volvo, safety's been first since 1927. We've saved millions of lives with the invention of the three-point seatbelt in 1959. At Volvo, we've made driving safer for you and them. Visit safety.finleyvolvo.com to learn more. So they say if you give a man a gun, he'll rob a bank. But if you give a man a bank, he'll rob everybody. But the good news for you is Private Money Club runs solely on peer-to-peer -peer relationships, which means no banks allowed. So finally, there's a community for real estate entrepreneurs where it is truly a win-win solution. This community is a place where you can connect with other lenders and other borrowers, and the end results, massive growth for you. You get to build your real estate empire, and you get to do it solving other people's problems. So if that sounds like a place you want to be, well, then join us. Go to privatemoneyclub.com forward slash Kelly. And if you want 500 bucks off, just add the code Kelly 500 and I'll knock 500 bucks off the premier membership. We'll see you on the inside. Welcome to the Kelly Cardenas podcast where attitude is everything on today's show. Um, I want, I'm going to hold up his book right away so you could see this. The one truth. This uh, book just changed my life. I just got uh, I just gobbled this quicker than any book that I've ever read in my entire life life. And I read very, very slow. Um, but it is my honor. I told this young man that uh, he, he, he made me look cool in front of my big brother because this is my big brother's one of his favorite authors in the world. And, and one of mine, my brother shared this book with me, the energy bus. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't read it, uh, you need to read it. It's an absolute game changer uh, for your, for you personally, for your company, for any industry. I read the book and I put it into action right away. I looked inside my company and I realized that there was energy inside my company that I didn't need there. I made a call the, the morning after, after I read the book, um, I released a person and it changed the whole trajectory of my career. So it is my honor, my pleasure. This, uh, young, this young man is a husband, a father, uh, and an author. Uh, uh, he's a best -selling, he has, his best-selling books and talks have inspired millions of readers and audiences around the world. He is, an, he is the author of the timeless classic, The Energy Bus, which I was just talking about, The Carpenter, The Training Camp, The Power of Positive Leadership, The Power of Positive Team, and his latest, The One Truth which is this one, which every single person in the world needs to read. It is one of the most heavy hitting books that I've ever experienced. When he's not running through airports, speaking uh, to businesses, hospitals, or schools, you can find him playing pickleball and taking long walks, uh, where, uh, which are where he gets most of his ideas. Uh, John believes in keeping his bio short because his accomplishments are meaningless. Um, uh, what matters most is what he, that he says something today that will inspire you to take action tomorrow. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what he has been able to do in my life. And it is my honor and pleasure to present to you, Mr. John Gordon. Hey, thank you so much, Kelly. Great to be with you. And it, I love being called young. It makes me feel energized. <laughs> Well, it's it's incredible to me because uh, there's there's a lot of books that you'll read and pick up, but there's others that cause you to take action. Um, take me into this, John, because as an author, that's the the number one thing that you want someone to do is not only just read your words, but take action. How have you been able to do that? Yeah, when I write books, I want people to take action. I think I think like a coach because. I played sports my entire life. And so I'm always thinking about, okay, what's the problem? What's the solution? And then how do we act on it to be our best? So when I write books, I want to keep them simple. I want to share principles and practices and then action steps people can take. And I think that's why my books have had a big impact. That's why they're shared because people feel like, hey, I removed the clutter 
and then you're able to act on what you need to act upon. And then you start to see the results of that. And then you realize that it's the simple, small things we do every day that produce big results. And simple doesn't mean easy, but when you remove the clutter, things are easier to do. And as you do these ideas day in and day out, and you start to live these practices, implement these principles, you start to see how these actions really create the life that you want to live. And this has been my own journey. Like years ago, I started to take the walk of gratitude, like one simple action every day. Cause I read, you can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. So if you're feeling blessed, you won't feel stressed. So every day I started to walk, take this walk of gratitude. And as I'm walking, I'm just saying what I'm thankful for. And each day I would do that. I'm flooding my brain and body with these positive emotions that uplift me rather than the stress hormones that slowly drain me and over time slowly kill me. And you're creating a fertile mind for, for, for success when you do that every single day. And I can look back on my life and realize, wow, the ideas I've had, the books I've written, the peace I feel was the result of that one simple action I've been doing now for over 18 years. Well, it's incredible too, because in reading the, the one truth, um, I saw and felt you more vulnerable than I've ever read you. And I said this to my brother this morning. I said, um, you know, it, it was amazing because you set that up in the first two books in that book. And for those of you who haven't read it, you need to read it now. Like you need to get this book now. In the first two books, you set us up and then you hit us with the knockout punch, which I had never seen you go to before. Why did you feel so free and so vulnerable in this book? Well, what's cool about this book is it's three books in one. So there's book one, book two, book three in the same book. It's almost like section one, section two, section three. But my brother read it and he said, you know, it's almost like you have three books in one here. And I thought, oh, what a great idea. So I'm gonna actually call them book one, book two, book three. And book one is elevating your state of mind and what lowers your state of mind. So I wanted to teach how thoughts work because once you understand how thoughts work, you can begin to master your thoughts and you can raise your state of mind. And instead of allowing all the negativity and all the negative thoughts to lower your state of mind. And that's a game changer right there. I was speaking to a bunch of sports teams, college teams, pro teams, sales teams, when I first had the idea for this book, before I even wrote the book, I was teaching book one to all these organizations. So I thought, okay, this is really effective. It's working. And then if I had time, I would share book two to who I was speaking to. Book two explains how oneness and separateness play out in every aspect of our life. A higher state of mind is the result of oneness, more connection, more unity. A team that is united and connected is a more powerful team. A team that is divided and separate is a weak team. And once you understand relationships and communication and how connection brings you into oneness and how disconnection creates separation and how this happens at the psychological level, at the relational level, at the team level, at the country level, fear divides, love unites. You can see how the root for the Greek word of anxious means to separate and divide. So anxious thoughts, negative thoughts, separate and divide you and make you feel weak and powerless. Whereas positive thoughts, encouraging thoughts, give you confidence and courage. It all starts to make sense. So I thought, okay, book two explains it all and helps you see the world through a different lens. And then book three, you said is the knockout punch where I really explain the solution to the separation and what's really causing the separation. And what are the unseen forces that are actually creating the separation and the power that unites, the power that gives us confidence, the power that gives us courage. And I had to go there because you can't write a book called The One Truth if you don't share the truth. I had to share the truth because it's called The One Truth. And so I had to explain what really is happening, what's going on, and this is the power behind it all. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. And the vulnerable part is, this was my own journey in discovering the one truth. This is the struggle I face. This is the anxiety I face. This is the depression I face. This is what everyone seems to be going through to this day. I mean, everyone I talk to is either going through it or knows someone who is dealing with depression, anxiety, chronic stress, and worry. It's actually become normalized. It's almost like if you're positive, it's actually strange. Like, what is wrong with you that you're so positive right now? <laughs> like, we even give a term 
to that called toxic positivity. Like we say, you're not even allowed to be toxic. If you are, it's, it's toxic. Like, what do you mean you overcome adversity? What do you mean that you overcome your challenges and situations? What? You're supposed to be depressed and down and sad and mad all the time. No, we're not meant to be that way. It's become normalized because so many people are struggling with it that way. So I wanted to give people the tools to raise their state of mind, to enhance their mental health, enhance their mental toughness, which then leads to high performance. And as you read the book, and I'm so glad you said everyone needs to read this book because I really feel that way. Like, not for my own self-promotion, because I really feel like I've given the tools and the secrets, like the keys. Like someone said the other day, I feel like you've given me the secrets to the universe, like literally how it works. And when you read this book, you'll literally become a Jedi. You'll be a Jedi understanding how it all works. And if you really take it to heart, and you implement it, you will become a more powerful force in this world when you can live what I share in this book. And so, yeah, I do think everyone needs to read it. I know it was given to me to share. I didn't come up with these ideas. Literally, it's been a journey of learning. A good friend of mine, Garrett Kramer, as I said in the book, taught me high state of mind, low state of mind. But then the understanding of the oneness and separateness came to me on walks all summer. And I was getting more and more of the ideas that just kept coming. And then I started to teach it to different pro athletes, NFL coaches, people you're watching on TV all the time. I was teaching it to them and they were going, wow, man, this is key. Wow, this is profound. Wow, this is impactful. Sitting there with Doc Rivers, teaching him the, all these principles and him going, yes, this is what my team struggles with. Yes, we need this. And it was so cool because everyone I shared it with had a aha moment. Everyone had a transformation. Everyone said, I see it. And now I see what happened in the past and how I got separated and how we need to come back to unity, or I see how this happened with this person and why it happened that way. So it helps you understand what's really going on behind the scenes and what we're all struggling with. And as I said, once you do, it gives you so much more power, confidence, understanding, awareness, and then peace, peace. And then as I said, power to change this world, to create this world, to create your life, and you will become truly a more powerful force. So. In that book, number three, I want to go to that one because you talk about the, the separation and you talked about how that oneness can bring you together. This concept of the third book, and you're going to have to read it, and I don't want to give away the whole thing, but you took a risk. I think that when I, think, when I see the best comedians in the world, when I see the best performers in the world, when I see the, the people at the top of their game, they all take risks that, that could go very wrong. You took a risk in this that could separate people as far as information, because you, I mean, you laid it. Like when I say knockout punch, when I was when I was reading this, I was like, I mean, I have so much respect for you, anyways, Mr. Gordon. But when you hit this one, I was like, that's a gangster right there. That's a Jedi right there. Did you did you struggle with that? Because or did you know that it could cause separation in the other way? Well, what I what I knew is if you you actually went to book three right away, it could. But I feel like if I take you through the progression of book one, book two, and book three, and once you understand everything comes down to oneness and separateness, and then you understand that there's a force of evil that's creating separation, that divides, and there's a power of love and good that unites, and everything comes down to that. That's why we have movies like Superman, which is all about what? Good versus evil. Harry Potter, good versus evil. Black Panther, good versus evil. Wonder Woman, good versus evil. Star Wars, good versus evil. Every major epic movie is about good versus evil because that's the narrative in the universe. And then you look around the world and you see evil play out in so many places, in so many ways, and evil is real. You can't deny the existence of evil. So once you understand that there is evil that exists and there is good that exists, then you can understand how a force of evil is always trying to separate and divide, which it does, and a power of love is always trying to unite, then everything starts to make sense. Well, then if that's the case and there's separation, how do you heal the separation? Well, love and forgiveness are what heals the separation, but it has to be a personal love and a personal forgiveness because relational psychology says you can't heal with a stranger. You heal in a loving relationship. It's got to be a loving relationship. Well, guess what? If we just believe in a higher power or a stranger, that stranger, that higher power, and if the higher power is a stranger, it can't heal you. That leads us to a power of love that is personal, 
that loves you and wants to forgive you and wants to heal you, well, then what does that? So what I was really sharing was, was, was truth. And what you're alluding to is I do share ancient biblical truths in the end, but I believe I set it up in a way to, of an understanding because the Garden of Eden is a story of separation, literally where men and women are separated from each other and from God. And that's an ancient Jewish story. As I said in the book, it's not a Christian story. It's an ancient Jewish story that explains it. And there's also stories of the Cherokee story of, of the two wolves inside of us feeding the positive or the negative. That's an ancient Cherokee story that represents the two voices, the two frequencies that exist. So I'm taking these ancient truths from different traditions and truth will be found everywhere. And I make this very clear in the book. I'm not here to share you the Bible. I'm not here to share you with you a religion. I'm here to share the truth. And so when I share the truth, the truth will be found everywhere. And the truth doesn't need the Bible to exist. But when you look at the Bible and you start to see the truth there, it makes so much sense because the Bible is actually the only book that explains all of the truth. It explains the battle of good versus evil. And then it actually explains, it's the only book that explains the prescription on how to solve and create the solution to the separation taking every thought captive, the renewing of the mind. Don't be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Or Romans 8, 5, 6. A mind governed by the flesh leads to death. A mind governed by the spirit leads to life and peace. That's it right there. You don't need a religious understanding to know that that's it right there. Is your mind and soul, which we all have a mind and a soul, being governed by the flesh, and power and greed and money and sex and cheating and all the things that lead you to separation, that lead you to dysfunction? Or is it being governed by the spirit of life and peace, mindfulness and prayer and meditation and walking each day and allowing the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to move through you, to fuel you, to, to renew you? What is our mind needing right now? Renewing. What do most people need right now? Renewing. What do most people feel? Separate. Every mental health disorder reports feelings of isolation, disconnection, and feeling separate. See, no one can argue when you share the truth right in front of them. And the truth is mental health disorders move us towards separateness, whereas wholeness and health and peace moves us towards and is a manifestation of the oneness that we feel. So when you move from oneness to separateness, you move from positive to negative. When you move from separate to oneness, you move from dysfunction to health and wholeness. Well, what moves us towards health and wholeness? These ancient biblical truths that I'm sharing, a mind governed by the spirit, life and peace. So there it is. It's all right there for us. And it's the prescription. And it's my good friend who's actually not even religious, who's a conscious, literally, a consciousness guy who said to me, I just love the New Testament because it's a prescription on how to move towards oneness. And once he said it, I thought, wow, he gets it. He's not religious, but he sees how it's actually just sharing the truth. So that's why I went there because I said, I got to share the truth. And as I said in the book, I'm not here to teach you religion, but you'll find the truth in this text that teaches us how to win the battle of our mind and teaches us how to move towards oneness and wholeness and healing. And guess what? Everybody wants that. And guess what? I got to say it. Jesus actually came and taught this very thing that I'm teaching. And he basically said, follow me, right? Follow me and I will show you. And my burden is easy, right? And I will take your burden. And Jesus is actually the only one that actually came to take our burden, to take our pain, to take the sin that separates us and bring us the love and forgiveness that heals us. And I ask people all the time, even friends who are, who are not believers, because they're still my friends and I still love them. I don't, I don't have friends just because of your beliefs or your faith. And I'll say to them, do you have a hole in your soul? Oh, uh, yes. Everyone agrees they have a hole in their soul. My Buddhist friends know we have a hole in their soul. Okay. How do you heal it? <laughs> if you have a hole in your soul, how do you heal it? Well, self-love. Nah. Self-love helps fill it. Self-forgiveness helps fill it. Community helps fill it. But the only way to heal the hole in your soul, and it's a God-sized hole, 
is the love and relational connection with a creator who created you for connection, who wants to love and heal you. And in that healing, right, you become more whole. And how does that happen? Through love and forgiveness of a personal God, not a stranger God, not just a higher power, a personal God that loves you and wants to heal you, redeem you, and restore you back to oneness and wholeness. And that is actually the teaching and the teaching and understanding of Jesus. And as someone who wasn't a believer until he was 35, 36 years old, I struggled with the separation big time. And once I became a believer, I came and moved towards oneness and healing and wholeness. And I would argue, Jesus didn't come to establish a religion. He came to heal. He came to bring about oneness and healing for the kingdom to actually make an impact in this world. And so Jesus actually talked about the kingdom all the time. And he came about to bring about oneness, oneness with the father, oneness with the creator. And you are meant to be connected with your creator. When you're not connected, that's where the separation happens. So just as a fish swims in water and a tree grows in the soil, you thrive when you're connected to your creator. And when you're not connected, that's when you experience all sorts of problems. And that's when people often reach out to me when they're experiencing all these issues and they come to a place where they realize their life, their self-will, their self-love, their self-drive is not enough. There's something missing because they're still trying to fill the hole in their soul with themselves. And you'll never find or fill a God-sized hole with anything but God. Only God could fill it. And so that's why I had to share that in the book. And as you go about that, understand this, guess what? That's when healing takes place. And who doesn't want to be healed and who doesn't want to be renewed? And I had to share the truth because I know so many people are struggling and you've got to get to the root of the suffering and then the true and real answer to the solution to solve it. And the way I lay it out, really it almost becomes logical. Like people say faith is illogical. Actually, no, it's actually becomes very logical when you understand it in this way. And I know I just talked for a long time, but but that's what I love about this book. It's why I went there. It's why I had to be bold about it. Because when you know something's the prescription and you know someone's suffering, if I don't give you the prescription, then I'm doing you a disservice and I'm not living up to the plan and the purpose of my life. I'm not living to the mission that I'm supposed to share. And trust me, it'd be a lot easier for me and I probably would make a whole lot more money just talking about positivity and staying positive and being like a lot of teachers out there who say, here, eat from this fruit of the tree and you'll be like God. They're basically saying, you have the power. What I'm saying is no, you must connect to the greatest power in the universe. You're here to create and connect with the ultimate power. You connect with the ultimate power. You become co-creators with God and his power now moves through you for you to create this world that you're meant to create, to create this life you're meant to live, to create this impact you're meant to have, to do with power. So in that oneness, his power becomes your power. And now you become a powerful force. To me, that's the more powerful teaching. It's the harder teaching, but it's the more real teaching. And it's the truth that everyone needs to understand and know. And that's how I live my life now. And that's why I'm bold. And that's why I'm confident in what I do and who I am. Because when you really listen, you cannot argue with this. And I literally can debate anyone and logically on it. And I pretty much really believe it'd be hard to debate because the truth, you can't beat the truth because the truth is the truth. <laughs> it was it was masterful. For me, it was like watching Muhammad Ali in, in the rope-a-dope. Uh, when he took George Foreman through those 15 rounds. You took me through those 15 rounds in book one and book two. I want to jump to book one because in there's a graphic. And I'm going to show the graphic. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it right here where there's not that many dots in the circle. There's a lot of dots in the other circle. Take us to this high and low state of mind because when you just showed me that graphic, John, I didn't read well when I was growing up. I still don't. I don't read fast unless I read your book. Like when I read your book, I gobbled it. Yeah. But it made so much sense. And, and when you said high state of mind, and then you said low state of mind, it was so simple, but so profound that you, you set me up. You were jabbing me in that one. And I was, I mean, I was eating the punches the whole time. Can you, can you break that part down for us? Yeah, I had to do that. And that's how I taught so many people initially. And that gets them understanding, oh, we have different states of mind. And clutter, which is a lot of thought, creates a low state of mind. Clarity focus, positivity creates a higher state of mind. 
When you have less thought, you have more clarity, you have more focus, you have more positivity, you have more confidence, courage. When you have a lot of clutter, you have fear, anxiety, worry, and doubt. Well, guess what? The separation and the feeling of separation and all the division that happens within us because of different things that come up in our life, what happens is that creates a lot of wounds. Those wounds create a separation, which then creates a lot of thought, a lot of clutter, a lot of anxiety. So negative thoughts come in to your mind and your soul and fill it with all this thought, all the worry, all the anxiety, all the doubt. And those five Ds I talk about in the book, doubt, distortion, discouragement, distractions, division, they come in and they cause more and more separation, but a ton of clutter and lower your state of mind. Then the higher state of mind, the oneness, in the oneness, when you're meditating or praying, how do you feel? You feel peace. You feel a lot of clarity. You feel focus. You feel confidence. You feel courage. And when you're feeling that way, it's a completely different feeling. Again, everyone resonates with this. We know what it's like to have that oneness and that feeling of oneness. And we know what it's like to feel divided and disconnected. So showing the pictures is such a great example because once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it describes how you're feeling. Right away, you're like, oh, that's me with all the, all the clutter. Oh, that's me with all the clarity. I want to get to more clarity. Well, that's what happens when we pray. It's what happens when we meditate. And then I give the acronym and acronyms in the and the uh, action plans of tune, T U N E, whole W H O L E, prayer. And as you follow those, I'm not going to share those now. But as you follow those from the book, you then move towards that higher state of mind. And I think the greatest thing I share in the book, though, is probably the understanding that the brain is an antenna, which I think is revolutionary. You're going to change a lot of lives and help people understand how thoughts work and how their mind works. Just to prove that, we have 86 billion neurons, and every neuron has a transmitter and receiver on the neurons. And no one's really ever said the brain is an antenna before. But as I've been sharing it out there talking, and since the book came out, I'm getting a lot of people going, of course, it makes so much sense. Like, of course. That's why I said this book is more like you're remembering things than actually learning something. Because everything I share, when you hear it, you go, of course, because it resonates within your soul because the, the soul already has the truth written on it and in it. It's already written on your heart, mind, and soul. You already know it. So when you read this book, it's going to go, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I bet some people say, this is the most profound book I've ever read. It's just so new, so so revolutionary. I bet other people say, well, it's just saying everything I already knew, which is so interesting because it's like, yeah, but did you ever put it all together this way that you <laughs> might have known it and implemented it and actually took action on it? And maybe you know it because, again, you have this intuitive knowing, which I'm glad you do. And if, if, if that is you, where you just intuitively know it, then even better, now you know how to implement it and make this a part of your everyday life because knowing and doing are often two, in, two different things. So yes, the clutter and clarity, the di and taking you through different diagrams, showing you how different aspects of your life, different scenarios, how that moves you towards oneness or separateness, like uncertainty and fear or social media. And social media being the issue of, of, you know, separation. Like we often talk about it all the time, like, is it the social media? But I don't really think it's the social media. I think it's the feeling that we get from social media. We feel separate. And so it's whatever will make you feel separate. We'll blame social media. But once you realize it's not social media, it's your feeling of separateness, that gives you a greater understanding and allows you to take power back instead of blaming social media. Ego, edging God out. Big egos separate you. Narcissists actually feel separate. Cancer, what? Divides and separates. So cells think they're alone. So they start to act autonomously. And so they become self-reliant instead of focusing on the greater body. And then they start to multiply and divide, eventually taking over the body. And this happens to us as well. So again, truth will play out everywhere. It will be in every fabric of our being and our existence. And as you read this and understand this, it makes so much sense. But as you said, it's a quick read. You literally can read it very quickly and digest it. But some people are reading it two or three times because they're realizing, wow, I overlooked that or I didn't give enough time to that. So even though it's a quick read, you'll go back probably and to really see the profoundness of some of the ideas. And again, I'm not taking credit. So it's like, oh, I'm so brilliant. <laughs> 
These were ideas that came to me. I swear to from God's mouth to my ears that I knew I was meant to share. I'm like, all right, God, I guess you want this message out in the world. And that's why I called it the one truth. It's the message that God wants. He wants the truth shared. And why does he want it shared? So that you will come to a certain religion? No, he wants it so you will come to him. So the God, the creator of the universe who created you can now heal you so you can become all that you're meant to be. That's it. So you'll become a powerful force in this universe because you're not meant to go through life fearful, anxious, worried, and stressed all the time. You're not meant to go through life feeling in that low state of mind. You are really meant to go through life in that higher state. You're meant to go through life with peace and power and joy and confidence and courage. And in that understanding, in that power, that's how you then bring heaven to earth. That's how you bring healing to others. It's how you bring love to others. It's how you bring light to others. So now you become a positive change agent in this world by being someone who is powerful, not to, not to take over this world, but to empower this world. Well, John, I, I started the podcast because of my two kids, Maddox and McKenna, and I didn't want them to worship idols in this mm. world. I wanted them to be inspired by icons like yourself. So what advice would you have for Maddox and McKenna? And if you could use both their names and call yourself Uncle John, it would be awesome. Maddox and McKenna. Well, McK Maddox and McKenna, Uncle John here, I would tell you this. Don't worship people or idols. I don't want you to worship me. I want you to worship the creator of the universe, God. I don't want to be your God. I want to lead you to the God who loves you, cares about you, and forgives you, and has a plan for your life. I want you to get to know that God and connect with that God. And in that oneness and that connection, in that love, that God will reveal your purpose to you. He will reveal the plan for your life. He will help you stay positive in the moments you want to give up. You will face tests. You will face challenges. You will face adversity. And all these tests can separate you if you let them. The negative voices will try to call to you to actually take that call and then to start responding to that call and to follow that call. But you have a choice. Am I gonna listen to the lies and the call to become less or will I listen to the voice of God and the call to become more? I want you to listen to the voice of God, the one who calls you to more, to be more, to become everything that you're meant to be. That is the journey of life. That is the ultimate test. Which path will I choose? Which voice will I listen to? And will I move towards separation or wholeness and oneness? And so my goal is that you will actually move towards that oneness and that wholeness. And don't let Christians keep you from Christ. There'll be many people who let you down. There'll be many people who don't live these principles. There are many Christians who don't act like Christians. Don't get caught up in that. The world wants to attack the truth and the love of God because of people who don't listen to God and don't actually share the love of God. And so make sure you're always realizing that people are going to let you down. People are flawed. That's okay. But keep turning to and keep tuning into the spirit of God and the God that will never let you down, that always is for you, always pushing you to become more and always loving you along the way. Mr. John Gordon, I didn't tell you when we started that when I was growing up, I didn't really connect with superheroes. I didn't connect with um, uh, pro athletes. I only connected with authors, and they were my superheroes. They were my, uh, my, my sports heroes. And I was challenged because I didn't read well and I didn't write well. And to spend time with you today, um, that's like me being able to spend, uh, a basketball player being able to spend time with Michael Jordan. And to be able to see, as far as not only the leadership uh, concepts that you have, but also the action that you help people to be able to take, my hat's off to you. Uh, I am a, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable to be able to spend the time. And I'm going to force you to be my friend for the rest of your life. So I'm, I'm not even going to ask you to be on the show again. <laughs> We're going to have another one because you just, I mean, for 30 minutes, just dropped absolute, I mean, power. And I want to thank you for all of your incredible wisdom. Hey, thank you, Kelly. Thanks for allowing me to share. And thanks for challenging me to even be more bold than I was in the book and to share more encouragement with others. You know, at the end of the day, I think about this often. 
we only have one life to live and I don't want to get to the end of my life and know that I left it. I left it there where I, I didn't give my all. I didn't give everything that I should have given. I didn't say all that I should have said. I didn't help the people I was supposed to help. I was scared. I was timid. I didn't want to offend anyone or anything like that. All the lies that come up that keep people from sharing their boldness and their faith. I help become, people become better leaders. I work with a lot of great teams. I work with the, the best companies on the planet, the top leaders on the planet. But if I don't help you overcome the fear that's holding you back and help you overcome the separation that you're experiencing within your soul, then I can never truly help you become the great leader you're meant to be or the great difference maker because everything starts at the root. And if you invest in the root, you're going to get great fruit. And what we talked about today was the root. And I'm so glad we did. Well, I tell you that when the compliments that you get when no one's around, when you're not around, or I think mean the most, and especially when they can't uh, have any advantage to the person giving them. I just had Eddie George on the show, Heisman Trophy winner. I'm a huge Oilers fan, been a fan for my yeah. whole entire life. He talked about you and talked about your book and how he brought your book in, bought it for his whole entire, the uh, Tennessee State University football team, yep. brought that in. And he said it was unbelievable um, to be able to see the impact uh, that it has. So I just, I want to congratulate you again. Um, it's not only the theory, guys, uh, if you're listening or watching, it's not only the theory that John has, but it's the the action. It's the action. And I tell you, like, it was, this was Muhammad Ali to me. This was, you, you are, you are Muhammad. I mean, I've never seen anybody set someone up the way that you set this up. And it's just, again, my hat's off to you. Um, I, I appreciate you. And I look forward to forcing you to be my friend for the rest of your life. God bless you, Kelly. You got it. You're officially off the hot seat.